CBS Sports presents the Geico Play of the Day. Midway through the third quarter, the Eagles' Carson Wentz drops his baby in the basket of wide receiver Nelson Aguilar. He races by Cardinal safety Buddha Baker for the 72-yard score. That helps cement the Eagles' victory as Philadelphia keeps spinning its way to the top of the NFC East. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. James Brown here in New York with the State Farm post-game show. For those of you who just watched Buffalo, Cincinnati, Jacksonville, and Pittsburgh, we've got some bonus coverage coming your way. Right now, we're going to take you out to the contest at the Meadowlands. The, the Sam make that the Los Angeles Clippers. Well, I want to say Clippers. The Chargers taking on the New York Giants. 450 left in regulation. Giants on top, 22-20 over the Chargers. Let's join our announcers, Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, and Evan Washburn. Two winless teams. The Giants drop to 0 and 5. All right, so we take a look here. The uh, the Chargers and the Giants right now. Those who've been watching this, 27-22 uh, Chargers. Yeah, you know they were trying to drive the Giants, where an Eli Manning just threw an interception. Ball was tipped, and the ball was tipped, and the Chargers are going to take control of the football. Ultimately, they'll just couple snaps and they'll win the football game 27-22 to get back to the point where the, we were talking about the Giants and all that other stuff. Just the injuries are killing them right now. Mm. And just by way of information, again, due to NFL regulations, we have to pull you out of that game, but we will keep you up to speed on what's taking place. That is, Boomer. And that is the Chargers, not the Clippers, JB. Hey, you know what? I, I do that. <laughs> hey, I knew I was going to Boomer, I see LAC. What do you think? LA Clippers. You know, it's right? not the Clippers. It's the Chargers, JB. Oh, hey, hey, Boomer, he's moving down from Phil. Oh, now. It I'll tell you, me up the the closer you get to Phil, the more, you know, intense he's going to get with it. It rolls downhill. <laughs> no question about it. In fact, that's the Phil. What rolls downhill? What is it? You know what I'm saying. You know what the I'm water saying. rolls downhill. But anyway, you okay, were going to button that up. Go ahead. Giants now, uh, they're, you know, 0-5. There was all the talk about the New York Jets in New York tanking. You remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah. It was about five weeks ago. The New York Jets, to their credit, are 3-2 and two right now. Their schedule is going to get much more difficult. They they host, I guess, the Patriots next, and then you take a look at their schedule. They got a lot of tough teams on there, uh, uh, you know, ahead of them. For the New York Giants now, they're going to be 0-5. Who would have thought that the Giants would have been 0-5? They were the preseason, one of the preseason favorites in the NFC to go to the Super Bowl, and now you got to wonder what happens to Ben McAdoo, what happens to Eli Manning, what happens to this entire franchise as this season wears on, and I mean it is going to wear on. JB, he's right. This is this is going to turn into this. This is going to be rough to lose so many critical player. The only way you can it's, now it's final. The Los Angeles Chargers. I made that mistake today too. Oh, baby. I didn't call them the Clippers, though. But 27 and 22 over the Giants. But the injuries. Now the weaknesses of the team could even show up bigger because you lost those wide receivers and Ben McAdoo, Eli Manning. Hey, my, all of us. I think. I don't know. I did. I thought this was going to be a huge year for the New York Giants, and that is definitely not going to happen. I was going to ask. I mean, as ex-players and coach player here. What in the world can be the mindset at this early point of the season at 0 and 5? Uh, I would imagine they're going to go to work tomorrow. Now, I've been on a couple of bad teams myself, so I ate you know, maybe a little bit of expertise in this area. Yeah. It's going to be really, really hard to go in there, be motivated, and try to accomplish something. I mean, there's, certain, there's a certain thing called self-pride, and yeah. I would like to think everybody will fall back on that. I'm sure the coaches will fall back on that. There's also a thing called NFL reality, and mm. the reality is, is they've lost all their best players, and Eli's going to be out there on, his, on an island, and, and, and I don't know, he's thrown to guys that are basically inexperienced. This is a very, very tough situation for the Giants. You know, that usually the football gods will deal, deal you a hard hand later on in the season, and it has to do with losses that you take on the field. But now you're having losses with guys going down, and it's tough because it is a reality check. You have to fight the urge of listening to the noise. You got to fight the urge, listen to guys within a locker room that want to quit, and then you got to fight the urge from really booking your vacation already. Because realistically, they're not going to make a run in the postseason. They're not going to win a Super Bowl. So now guys are checked out. 
How do you get these guys to bring their minds back into that locker room and not just play for themselves and play on the logo on the helmet, play for that logo, and also their play fans. for the city that they're and boy, in? boy, guess who's got the responsibility of keeping the team fired up? And he really does. I mean, when you yes. talked about Ben McAdoo to walk in there on Monday, that being tomorrow, and I think the biggest thing they got to do is just sh drop all the books, shut the books, and just sit there and just talk about the reality of where they are. Mm. And really, the, the challenge, and more, I would say the opportunity they have right now to prove the character of what you are. Because, you know, they yeah. always say adversity, it doesn't build character, it reveals it. Mm. You know, and I mean, right now you'll find out not just about yourself, but the people you surround yourself with. Because it's easy in good times, but in the tough times, you have to dig deep and you'll find out individually what this is all it's about. Right. You know, Bill, it's one thing to have, to be the Cleveland Browns and be 0-5, because you can I still fight. I think it's easier. I get it. To have a team with high expectations to be 0-5, that's really tough to deal with. And the State Farm postgame show will continue after this. This is the State Farm postgame show. All right, folks, welcome back inside Studio 43 and the State Farm Post Game Show. I'm James Brown, full house with my guys, Boomer, Nate, Coach, and, of course, Phil Sims. Hey, folks, a reminder, up next on CBS, it'll be professional bull riding featuring the greatest bull riders battling the best bucking bulls at the DeWalt Guaranteed Touch. Make that tough. Invitational 15-15 bucking battle. That's coming up next right here on CBS. Boy, right, what a day for highlight. Ben Roethlisberger. Five interceptions, two of them returned for touchdowns. This one by Telvin Smith from 28 yards out. The next one, you're going to see Jalen Ramsey is going to bat this ball. What a game Jalen Ramsey had. His first interception led to a, touch, a touchdown, but he bats that ball to Perry Church. He takes 51 yards for a touchdown. And Leonard Fournette caps a day by the Jacksonville Jaguars with this 90-yard run. Breaks the line of scrimmage. He had 181 yards on the day. They had 231 yards rushing. And again, the five interceptions in Ben Roethlisberger, ben Roethlisberger and they lose 30 to 9. You see Shad Khan up in the box right there. Big day right there for Jacksonville's defense. And after the game, it was, again, we know not a big day for Pittsburgh. After the game, it's coach Mike Tomlin. For us, uh, more than anything, it's not what happened we saw what happened we participated in what happened um it's how we respond to it and and respond i'm using my words very carefully there because we don't need to react to it we tip our caps to those guys today we compliment them we get in the lab tomorrow we go back to work and we work on our response uh, we're going to be defined defined individually and collectively how we respond to an outing like that um, i've been in it long enough to have that understanding i think many of our team does that was relayed to them uh, we chew it today. Um, we get in the lab tomorrow. And uh, that's what we intend to do. All right, how about the Cincinnati Bengals? Don't look now, but they're back in the mix here, winning two in a row after they beat the Buffalo Bills today. Andy Dalton coming into this game the last two weeks, almost 600 yards passing and six touchdowns and no interceptions. They start this game with a 77-yard touchdown pass to A.J. Green. He actually had... A couple of touchdowns on the day. Uh, I mean, excuse me, a, a couple of interceptions on the day. Andy Dalton did, but Joe Mixon goes around the corner. And this was a big win for the Bengals because beating Cleveland is one thing, beating the Bills another. They actually held the Bills to 221 yards despite the Bengals turning the ball over three times. They go on to win 20 to 16. So the Bengals improved to two and three with that victory over a good Buffalo Bills team. And after the game, of course, it was a jubilant Bengals locker room. In the NFL, we got to go win games like that, and we got to grind through the third and the fourth quarter. Great job of that, okay? Yeah. Great job of that. But we can do it when it just ain't Wednesday on the line, right? Because yeah. <laughs> I know we dug a little deeper, but that's good. All right, listen. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Let's be smart. Enjoy it. We're just getting started. No, we're not going to see you Monday. We're going to learn. We're still learning, man. Where we want to go, we got to keep working at it. Amen. Okay? You know that. You know that. All seriousness, you know, seriousness there. We, we know what's out there. 
it's worth it. Yes. But we got to commit to it totally. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a total commitment. It's not just when it's easy, it's when it's hard. And when everybody else is not doing we got to do more and do better. Okay? Great job. Congratulations. Yes. JB, where you at? Who they? Who they? Who they? Who they think going to beat the Bengals? Who they? Who they? Something wow. going to change. Winning is great. That is a good example of it. Here we go. Miles Garrett sacks Josh McCown. First play of his NFL career gets a sack. Kevin Hogan comes in. Deep pass to the left side to David Najoku for a touchdown. Cleveland, 7-3. Josh McCown. Deep pass to the right. Jermaine Kirst for a 24-yard TD pass. The Jets up 17-7 at that time. They win 17-14. Another solid day by Josh McCown. And the Jets, outplayed for most of the day, found a way to win the game. Here's your Tennessee at Miami highlights right here. Matt Castle in for Mariota. He drops back. Kiko Alonso hits him. Rashad Jones picks it up. And nobody's moving, but the man with the rock, he scores a touchdown. The call will stand. He actually had two formal recoveries on the day. Here's Matt Castle. He's going to hit Phillip Supernoff. Gets in the end zone. They tie the score 10 to 10 at that point. The offense for Miami struggling most of the day, but right here, Jay Cutler threads the needle six yard touchdown to Jarvis Landry. They struggled, but they made it happen when it counts. It's a win nonetheless. Dolphins win 16 to 10. Look, all of you guys have played the game. You've been around long enough to know it can happen. Ben Roethlisberger, what a tough day. A career high five picks, Bill. You know what? And I know Ben Roethlisberger, and I think that Mike Tomlin just said it very well. I mean, he will get over this. But you know what? Again, it's one of these, these games. Great play right there by Jalen Ramsey. But then you'll have the tip ball, and it kind of snowballed from there, trying to do a little bit too much at times. And again, there's still a lot of credit to this Jacksonville defense. We mm -hmm. talked about it before. They got Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey, A.J. Boye, Church as a safety. This is a very good secondary. And and again, you know, they, they kind of got away from this uh, right now. They couldn't get anything going in the running game. And uh, they, they are not in sync on offense. You can say what you want. They have not been in sync this entire season for five weeks right now. And there are some issues they're having on that offensive side. Bill, of the you're right. It's so off, often easy to talk about the team that's been there, talk about them mostly, but give Jacksonville some credit. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. Hey, this is the Jacksonville team we saw week one in Houston, right? Yeah. Still, I'm not crazy about their passing game. It's not great. Blake Portals, I think, under 100 yards passing today yeah. and still won. But when the other team's giving the ball away or you're, you're taking it away, it's much easier to win a football game. I, I still worry about them offensively because if they have to make big throws late in games mm. to win games, I don't think the Jaguars can do that. And I know the Pittsburgh Steelers will be back. Yeah, the Steelers, Tomlin said, don't react. We're going to respond and we're going to chew on this. Guess what? That could leave a nasty taste in your mouth. It's either going to cause you not to want to eat or make you hungrier for next week. Well, you know, Jacksonville, weeks one, three, and five, it's been defense. Don't put it in the hands of the quarterback. That's work. That's why the three and two. So okay. I should be off for them so next week? Just forget, forget about them next week. Right? Next week. Should be tough. <laughs> it, it, it goes according to pattern, right? Hey, the State Farm Post Game Show will continue with more after this. Welcome back to Studio 43 and the State Farm Post Game Show. A reminder, join us on Saturday for college football action. The SEC on CBS features Auburn at LSU. Coverage begins at 2.30 p.m. Eastern with college football, the drive to Atlanta. And that will be followed by college football today. All right, back to the highlights. JB, we got a big game Thursday night. It's going to be these Eagles at the Carolina Panthers wow. Thursday night. Think yes. about that. These Eagles are for Bill real. Bill. It's Carson Wentz. Today, he throws four touchdown passes against the Cardinals. They run for over 122 yards on the ground, led by LeGarrette Blunt. But Carson Wentz mm. continues to get better and better and Ooh. better. And you can see the pass protection supporting him today. in that pocket by that big offensive line. <laughs> the Eagles are having fun. They're flying high, and they absolutely crush the Cardinals, 34-7 to today, as you can see, 304, four touchdowns on the day for Carson Wentz. First four-touchdown game for Wentz. Yeah, Carson Wentz like John Wayne out there the way he plays. Eli Manning he finds a wide open Odell Beckham Jr. for a 48-yard touchdown on a double move. The two-point conversion fell, failed. The Giants were up 22-17. Odell Beckham Jr. goes up for a pass, comes down hard on his left ankle, and he gets carted off the field. That is a big blow to this Giants football team. Eli Manning gets sacked later in the game. 
by Melvin Ingram. He fumbled, and Ingram recovers. 22 to 20, New York Giants. Phillip Rivers hooks up with Melvin Gordon. Saw this play twice today from 10 yards out for the touchdown. 27-22, Los Angeles Chargers over the Giants. He did that one slowly, and that's exactly what I'm going to have to do the Los Angeles Chargers. So they get their first one of the season, and the Giants drop to 0-5. And, and again, we don't know exactly what happened in terms of the severity of the injury to Odell Beckham Jr., but it looked bad, and it was that same ankle, uh, Nate. Yeah, and it's a slant route right here, and I'll tell you this, that oh. Odell is one of the best slant route runners in the game. So even if he does bounce back from this, whenever that will be, will he still be able to do the things that he's been able to do before? But aside from the injury, how are they going to bring that type of energy, that electricity? Because even when he's not getting the ball, he provides Great such point. a charge to yeah. the squad. You know, I, I don't know about you guys. I had a high ankle sprain late in my career. That thing just lingered for about eight, nine weeks towards the end of the season. I don't want to go out on a limb here, but I, but I guess I, I'll have to. I just don't necessarily know that we'll ever I, we'll see him back again this year. That was a significant injury. It's the same ankle. And I think if you're the Giants, why would you even risk putting him back out on the field late in the season for a meaningless a, game? Well, it's a great example. He was holding out this offseason why players hold out and know their value mm. and get their contract because things like this can happen, Talk about so it. it's tough. And that's a part of the game, a tough part of the game for sure. Go ahead, Coach. No question. He's a playmaker, and not, <clears throat> probably the one playmaker they have, and now they're going to have to find uh, another approach to an offensive system. Yeah. No question about it. It's going to be pretty tough this week coming up to see just what the Giants get done to try to see if they can salvage something. All right, folks, the State Farm Post Game Show will continue here on CBS after this. <laughs> Four years off the team, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. My chief's family gave me an overwhelming amount of support. When they decided to do pink, after that caught on, I think it's really important because people now identify with that. Not just being at a breast cancer, but for all cancer, man, that's huge. You know, through awareness, knowledge, research, I think that we can all attack this together. Is the State Farm Post Game Show. Back here at the Broadcast Center in New York, the State Farm Post Game Show. And folks, we'll be back with more football next Sunday. Phil can't wait. As a matter of fact, he's going to wait right here till then. Starting right here with the NFL today at noon Eastern. That'll be followed by a doubleheader in week six early. It'll be the Super Bowl champion Patriots at the Jets later. In our featured matchup, it'll be the Steelers against the Chiefs. That all comes your way next Sunday here on CBS. Nate. Carolina Panthers at my Detroit Lions. Check out this play, a little misdirection, and a shovel pass to Christian McCaffrey. He gets in, six-yard touchdown, score 10-10 to at that point. Cam Newton dropping back. He's looking. They only rush three, oh. so it gives him time. Helmet or higher in the red zone. He gives it to Devin Funchen, who goes up and gets it. They take the lead 17-10 to at this point. And here's Cam Newton dropping back. And he's throwing an absolute dime to Kelvin Benjamin, 31-yard touchdown. The question was, how will he respond? He responded with 26, with 33, 355, and three TDs in the win. And on a day where they were honoring Peyton Manning, he takes a snap from Jeff Sarity, and he throws it into the end zone to Reggie Wayne. One of the best completions of the day for the Colts wow. right there. And Jacoby Percet was quarterback and during the day. You see him right here on the three-yard run. He was 22 of 34, 314 yards. T.Y. Hilton, 177 yards receiving. Here you're going to see Brian Hoyer to George Kittle. Ties it up at 23. But Adam Vinatieri, the ageless one, two field goals from over 50 yards. This one from 51. He will now win the game in overtime. Indianapolis will win this game 26 to 23. All right, how about an instant update, guys? Cowboys, Packers. Here comes Devontae Adams. The last time we saw him, he took that vicious hit on Thursday night football from Danny Trevathan. He's back in the lineup right there, 10 yards. They missed the extra point. 7-6 Cowboys over the Packers right now in the first quarter. All right, I got another update for you moments ago. We got Hawks in the Rams. Here's Tavon Austin. He can do a little bit of everything. Plays wide receiver, plays running back. How about that hesitation? High step. High step. That's a little high step right there. A little sauce on that run. 27-yard one. Rams up 7-0. to zero. 
I got to tell you what, the Rams had the ball and they went all the way down the field and Todd Gurley fumbled right at the right, goal line. Right, at the goal line. Right, and it cost them a possibly another touchdown. So the Rams are going up and down the field on this very good. I just I just like the joy that Bill was talking about that Colts game. You had so much energy. I don't know why. <laughs> Want to stay up to date? Hey Siri, show me football scores. Okay, so. Week six in the league kicks off with Thursday night football on CBS and NFL Network. It'll feature a pair of four and one squads. The NFC East leading Eagles will take on the NFC South leading Panthers. The two quarterbacks today, Wentz and Cam, combined for seven touchdowns. All right, folks. Now let's get an injury update from our NFL Today insider, Jason Locken, forward in the newsroom. Jason? Well, JB, the Raiders playing right now on our air, getting pounded without Derek Carr. It's E.J. Manuel under center. The good news, though, is continue to hear Derek Carr on pace to return. Next week, the Colts win without Andrew Luck. They probably better get used to that. Could be Jacoby Brissett at least into November. Luck still a ways away from returning. Monday night, Sam Bradford is slated to return barring a setback, and we're still awaiting more word on that Odell Beckham Jr. injury, JB, although obviously much concern there it did not look good. All right, Jason, thank you so much for the latest. We're going to step aside, although these guys are champing at the bit for more input. They'll get that opportunity as the State Farm postgame show continues after this. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 Minutes and the officers who stormed the Las Vegas shooter's room. That'll be followed by a new episode of Wisdom of the Crowd and NCIS Los Angeles. Plus, the season premiere of Madam Secretary. That's tonight, only CBS. Yeah, and just since, uh, moments ago, down 21-3, E.J. Manuel off the play action, steps up into the pocket, eludes a rush, finds Michael Crabtree behind the coverage, 41 yards out, and makes it 21-10. to All righty, so as we take a look at that score there of the uh, game in action, we uh, get some final thoughts from our guys here as we go around the horn. You know, I, I feel bad for the Giants, man. I really do. I mean, my heart goes out to them because of the amount of injuries that they're dealing with now, and it's, it's really significant. The one thing I will say about the NFL these days, when you look at the standings, how many teams are with, w within one game of each other? So I would say parity reigns supreme in the NFL, and it's not going to be until December until you truly find out who's going to make the playoffs. So try not to overreact if your team lost today. Yeah, all week last week when I was talking about Cam Newton, I, I heard people kind of collectively take a sigh or roll their eyes. Guess what? We're talking about Cam Newton again. He responded after what happened, the words that he had last week. The man had 26 uh, completions over on 33 attempts, and he went out there, had a game of his life up against the Lions, really strong outing in Detroit. So you got to give him credit for responding well and coming up big with a win. You know, I think adapt and adjust is what I feel like right now with, with football teams. You're five weeks in, like you said, Boomer, there's a lot of ups and downs. The roller coaster that the NFL provides you is the coaches that can kind of monitor that, engage their, their locker rooms, and, and make the necessary adjust, adjustments. You don't, you don't want to be playing your best football. You just want to continue to get better and correct on the things you didn't do the previous week. And hopefully within that, you can navigate your way through the middle and put yourself in a position to be there at the playoffs at the end of, of the season. I'm looking forward to the Thursday night. Carolina, Philadelphia, they're both coming off wins. That should be a good game. Yeah, it will be. You know, just go back to your, the highlight we saw of Marvin Lewis giving the speech to his team. I mean, you know what I told it? You remember, all of us now remember how great it is just to win a game in the mm -hmm. NFL and how hard it is. So we always talk about, oh, nine and seven and eight and eight like it's nothing. That's hard to do. But my take so far today, this year, Seattle, the, the Oakland Raiders, the New England Patriots, the New York Giants, the one thing that's disappointing, I thought all of them would have, like, good defenses, and the defense is letting them down in a lot of ways, where we always expect it to be the offense. For them, I think it's their defensive mm. side. You know, so I love the takeaways. Ad adapt and adjust. Playoff scenario will be determined late in the season. Players bouncing back even with self-created issues. I'm not sure what Phil said, but... Uh, <laughs> Nobody's ever sure. <laughs> hey, 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 uh, it's the Chargers, not the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. JP, we'll see you next week.